In the war of words between Red Bull and Mercedes, a lot of water has been muddied in assessing the relative form of their two cars and what may be behind it. The balance of power has been swinging between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton all season, but Mercedes' sudden and rather large qualifying advantage has not been easily accepted by Red Bull. With just two races left in a fascinating title running, let's try to separate the propaganda from the data to see where the reality may lie. The backdrop to the most recent controversy in this fight was Red Bull's belief in Brazil that Mercedes was somehow getting around rear wing flex regulations. The way it believed Mercedes was doing this was by allowing the underside of the wing out of sight of the rearward facing cameras to flex beyond a certain load, lowering the drag. That's why Red Bull boss Christian Horner made his threat in Qatar that if we see this wing here, we will protest it. We've made an entire video about this particular controversy and the consequences of it, so check that out if you want to understand this context in full. But here, we're keeping it tight to Red Bull's suspicions. The wing Mercedes selected for Qatar looked identical to that of Brazil, and Mercedes insists that's because it was actually the very same wing. And yet, there was no Red Bull protest. Red Bull felt an experimental new FIA load test with no regulatory value had made a key difference. Horner implied Mercedes had anticipated this test and amended the wing, adamant the Mercedes wing was architecturally the same as in Brazil, but with the underside no longer flexing to the same extent. Technically, this would be feasible. The carbon layup of the wing underside could be denser at the outboard ends than in the middle, allowing it to deform under load. A wing with the same shape underside with a uniform carbon layup would look the same but not deform. And Red Bull is adamant that Mercedes has suddenly been pegged back to Red Bull's level on the straights because of this. It's not a crazy theory but Mercedes is adamant it's not true and the performance patterns from Brazil and Qatar don't really back up what Horner was claiming. In Brazil qualifying Hamilton was fourth fastest through the speed trap. 9.2 kilometers per hour faster than 17th fastest for Stappen. Red Bull also cited things like Hamilton's closing speed on Lando Norris in the sprint race and even on Verstappen in the Grand Prix as evidence of an abnormal difference. But that speed offset could be quite easily explained by the combination of Hamilton's fresh engine, a tow all the way down the straight and the DRS being used. In Qatar, Hamilton's relative straight line performance did diminish. He was only 13th fastest through the speed trap in qualifying, 3.4 km per hour faster than Verstappen, who was 19th fastest. So the gap between the top qualifying speeds of Hamilton and Verstappen did indeed reduce between these races by 5.8 km per hour. And that's even with Red Bull having to run a bigger rear wing. But again, there seems to be a logical explanation as Mercedes took out Hamilton's fresh power unit from Brazil and gave him one that was less powerful as it had completed the previous three Grand Prix. Mercedes has openly admitted it's struggling with its power units, which have not only suffered from reliability issues, but have been suffering from a greater decline in power output than is normal. But perhaps more importantly is if Mercedes rear wing was suddenly legal and Red Bull was satisfied the straight line speed behaviour was under control, why was Mercedes still several tenths clear in Qatar? Before we get into answering that, we wanted to let you know this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN allows you to encrypt your data and hide your virtual location. It currently has more than 5 million users around the world and is available for use on all devices. A VPN is a virtual private network, so it gives you a new IP and DNS address and encrypts all your traffic, which is great for security and allows you access to content from your desired location. And it also has a new feature that gives you even more security, a tracker blocker. There's many benefits to a VPN beyond the security it offers. Some use it to watch sports coverage from other countries that may not be available in your location, but of course, you didn't hear about that particular trick from us. So if it sounds like a VPN is for you, and if you're someone who uses the internet regularly, it definitely is, Atlas VPN has a very special Cyber Month offer for you. For just $1.39 per month, you can sign up for three years of Atlas VPN, and that comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. For further details, click the link in the description below so you can take advantage of the security and flexibility of Atlas VPN.
The numbers tell a very simple story. In the second half of the season, the Mercedes has generally been the faster car in qualifying. Take a look at how the super time performance between the two title rivals has recently developed and you can see that Mercedes is hitting form at the perfect time as it's had the quickest car at four of the last five events. And in Brazil and Qatar, its advantage was much bigger than it's been previously. The speed trap figures only explain part of this. Comparing the speed profiles of the two cars throughout the straights gives a much fuller picture. Do this and in Brazil, Verstappen was losing 0.23 seconds to the Mercedes on the straights throughout the lap, which is 52.5% of the lap time deficit there. In Qatar, he lost 0.25 seconds on the straights or 54.9% of the total deficit. So the lap time advantage derived from the Mercedes greater straight line speed actually increased slightly in Qatar, even if it was by no more variance than his typical circuit to circuit. As we said, speed traps only offer a snapshot. They show the peak speed at a given moment, not how quickly the car came off the previous corner, how quickly they accelerated, or how quickly they were traveling down the straights before hitting that peak speed. Furthermore, Mercedes continues to be a very big chunk faster over the lap. You'll probably have seen pictures of Red Bull struggling with an oscillating DRS flap at times in recent races. That problem occurs on one of Red Bull's smaller wings, which it used in Brazil. Red Bull couldn't fix this in Qatar, so moved to a higher downforce wing for qualifying. Using this wing, Red Bull was losing the aforementioned 0.25 seconds on the straights per lap, but was 0.45 seconds slower over the lap entirely. So despite Red Bull's increase in wing level, Mercedes still took more than two tenths out of Red Bull through the corners. Horner claimed this was all in turn six all weekend, but that doesn't quite stack up to scrutiny. When we look at the qualifying deficit from Qatar in detail, we see the Red Bull's loss is 0.1 seconds in turns four and five, half a tenth in turn six, 0.2 seconds between turns seven and 10, and half a tenth between turns 11 and 16. The Red Bull tends to be a more front-limited car than the Mercedes, which is more rear-limited by comparison. That means the Red Bull is weaker on tracks that stress the front tyres more, while the Mercedes is weaker on tracks that stress the rears. This generally reflects the differing aero balance and the way the two cars have to be set up to maximise their respective concepts. At front-limited tracks such as the Hungaro Ring and Istanbul, the Red Bull tends to struggle. At rear limited tracks such as Austin, the Mercedes is not at its best. Many in the paddock expected the Qatar track to err towards being rear limited, but as the weekend progressed, it became clear that it was front limited. The more the track rubbered in, the more extreme this trait became, and the more it seemed to move towards Mercedes as a result. So we might simplify that and conclude that half of Mercedes' big lap time advantage in Qatar was from a better balance than the Red Bull, and half was from superior straight line speed. Another useful way of assessing the recent relative performance levels of Mercedes and Red Bull is to compare them to the rest of the field. So let's take a look at them in turn by analysing their super times, using each team's best lap time from each weekend expressed as a percentage to create a consistent reference across the season. Up to and including Mexico, Red Bull's average advantage over the best non-Mercedes was 0.655%. That slipped slightly to 0.596% in Brazil and then dropped pretty sharply to 0.443% in Qatar. That slipped slightly to 0.596% in Brazil and then dropped pretty sharply to 0.443% in Qatar. So on average over the last two races, the best non-Mercedes was 0.136% closer to Red Bull than had been normal this season. For reference, that equates to around 0.12 seconds on a hypothetical 90 second lap. But what about Mercedes? There has been a clear step from Mercedes versus the rest of the field across the last two events. It enjoyed almost double its usual advantage in Brazil, and even in Qatar where Red Bull had claimed Mercedes has been pegged back, it had a healthy step of 0.313% compared to the rest of the season. That combines to make Mercedes 0.43% faster on average in the last two races relative to the best non-Red Bull, a gain of almost four tenths of a second around our hypothetical 90 second lap. So at the same time Mercedes has clearly found extra performance, Red Bull has become slightly slower relative to the rest of the field. One extra element worth considering is Hamilton's own performance as Mercedes is adamant the seven time world champion is driving better now than at any point this season. 
Mercedes trackside engineering director Andrew Shovlin even said of Qatar qualifying, he's really in the zone at the moment. We can do all our simulations, but nothing explains why he was that far ahead of Max. Now that's a slight exaggeration because several factors do feed into this recent advantage and it can be explained to a reasonable extent. At both Interlagos and Qatar, Red Bull did not have the front end grip of its best tracks. The Mercedes advantage from fresher power units, particularly the one Hamilton used in Brazil, should also not be underestimated. And there's no denying Mercedes appears to have struck a better balance between straight line speed and cornering performance as the season has progressed. But the suggestion this has everything to do with flexible wings seems at least slightly dubious given Red Bull was happier in this regard after Qatar qualifying, yet Mercedes had still pummeled it with an equal advantage through the corners and on the straights. The upshot is that Hamilton now has back-to-back -back wins for the first time this year since early May, and for the first time this year Mercedes has more consistently had the quickest car. But we've seen enough throughout 2021 to know that Red Bull can just as easily top qualifying as it can find itself a couple of attempts to drift. Plus, Verstappen still has an 8-point lead, and it was only a couple of races ago that he edged clear in the title battle with his own back-to-back -back wins in the USA and Mexico. So who's brave enough to declare Mercedes really does have a decisive edge now? Let us know in the comments, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed our video, and remember to subscribe and turn notifications on to stay up to speed with us on everything important from the conclusion of this epic title battle.